Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 83 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm uh, teaching my system here how to make steam turbine components, because we're going to be building a steam turbine this episode. I've already kicked off the crafting of a lot of enderium. It's actually not as much as I need. I requested 200 enderium ingots, I'm going to need about 130 more to get all the cool stuff I want to get done. So today's episode, all about doing some steam turbine stuff, and we might switch gears and do something a little different too at some point i don't know we'll see um but there's definitely something i want to do and try which uh we'll, we'll have to check out if we're going to get to this episode or not so last episode we built this big old reactor right um so this episode we're going to spend a little time prepping to build the turbine where all the steam is going to go from the reactor so that's what we're going to take a look at. Uh, I'm going to need my dire hammer to clear out a good amount of space. So uh, let's see if I can remember what kind of space I need. Um, I believe that if I wanted to have this thing, then I'm going to need a 9 by 9 by 16 block deep turbine. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, cool eight nine and that's three up so if we did one two three so that's one two three four five six cool this is going to be a pretty big turbine <laughs> um and then i need this to be 16 blocks deep so i guess it would be wise of me at this point Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I'm gonna need a shovel. Do I have an excavator on hand? Yes. Cool. All right, now I lost track of where I was. See, this is what happens. Let's get our tape measure here. And we'll measure from here back to where I'm at here. So that's 13. 14, 15, 16. All right. So let's do that. Get a little bit of light going in here. And then uh, I'm going to put this stuff away and come back after I've dug out the rest of this 16 deep area. And then we'll have some fun building a giant turbine, which will power our base. All right, guys, let's see if I can math. Uh, 9 by 9 by 16 is what I said I needed, right? So, 9 by 9 by 16. Nice. Oh, I missed a piece. Smooth stone. I just uh, exchanged all the stuff around here for smooth stone, make it look a little bit nicer and cleaner. Yeah. Like I said, I do want to actually make this look like really fancy, but for now I'm just getting the components built and then we'll pretty it up later. Uh, so that's cool. We've got this thing all good to go. Let's get ourselves some turbine components. So let's start with turbine housings. Let's get, I don't know, 100. That sounds good, right? So that should be a quick craft. Cool. I should probably actually show you guys. Let's see if we pop up to base. Let's get ourselves a few acceleration cards. So we're going to want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these guys. Cool. And I should be able to pull this off. Nice. And that was with pure flux. Good. If we pop down into here, uh, inside the molecular assemblers, you can place some acceleration cards to speed up some processes. So one of these um, interfaces should have the, the stuff I've been adding to it lately. So by putting acceleration cards in the molecular assembler, it's going to craft a lot faster. So if we look at steam turbine housing, we just made 100 of those pretty easily, right? Let's make another 50 and see how much faster, or 40, let's say, with a... Uh, See how much faster that just crafted? Like, way faster. So uh, acceleration cards and new molecular assemblers, not a terrible idea. So I believe we're going to want to create this steam turbine in much the same way we created the big reactor, where I'm gonna have a bunch of housing like this. Um, this looks 
pretty good. And I think we want this to be all laid out here like so. I can get rid of this uh, light source that I placed down earlier. Hopefully I'm right about the sizing of this. I'm pretty sure I am, but eh, we'll find out if I derped. And by the way, when this is done, in case you guys haven't seen turbines from big reactors, we're going to have a lot of RF. Like, we're not even going to know what to do with all the RF we're going to have. That looks halfway decent. Ah, what I do? That looks cool. Okay, so that's uh, the basis. Let's get ourselves some turbine glass. I'm thinking 300. It's a rough guesstimate. Let's start with 200 and then we'll go from there. So that should craft really quickly, courtesy of those acceleration cards. Um, the only thing it's probably waiting for now is the crafting of things like the, um, yeah, see it's quickly burning through. All right, it's not bad. So it was probably waiting for graphite bars, even though we crafted a bunch of them earlier, right? So I don't know what it was waiting for. How are we for graphite at the moment? Yeah, see, we've, we've run out. So it's okay. We've got a decent amount to get started. Uh, what I'm going to do is use my trusty builder's wand for this. So that was a lot of turbine glass. We're going to need a lot more. So I guess what I'm going to do is come back in a minute after we've crafted a bit more because that was like easily 100 or more at that point. Yeah, we will definitely come back in a minute after I've gotten more turbine glass. Are we even crafting anymore? I think we are. Not terrible. All right, see you guys in a minute. All right, looks like I've got the basics of a steam turbine going. Nice. Uh, let's get a couple other things for a turbine. So we're going to want a turbine controller. Yep, definitely one of them. Let's craft like 20 of these guys for the time being. Uh, so we're definitely going to want the turbine controller. Turbine power port is absolutely going to be necessary. So you need, oh, plutonium. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, cyanite reprocessor is how we get plutonium. So I guess we need to get one of these going on. All right, cyanite reprocessor. Let's craft one of these guys. What do we need? Just a Eulorium fuel rod, which probably needs graphite. So while we're here, let's get like another hundred of these or so, just because it's coal and it's cheap. So cyanite reprocessors allow you to convert uh, bluto um, plutonium into cyanide, I believe it is, or cyanide into plutonium. Yeah, that's it. Cyanide into plutonium. And plutonium can be used to get um, more fuel. So it's basically repurposing your spent fuel rods. So all we really need, I believe, is a water source and a power source. So let's get some flux ducts. Uh, redstone energy should be fine, but I'll bring hardened just in case. Uh, then we'll also need... Let's do pipes. I think I'm gonna go put this downstairs where I already have like an infinite water source kind of running. Yeah, so we've got water going here, right? Cool. So if I were to pop this guy into the floor, my cyanide reprocessor, then I just need power down here. So let's jump into ender mini mode and see how I might run some power. thing and hardened flux duct that's okay these things can connect 
So if we popped this guy right here, he should be getting both power and water, I would think. So there we go, just had to configure this thing to input liquid from the right side. And now I should be able to put the cover back on and allow the reprocessing of cyanide. I believe it's two cyanide ingots becomes one plutonium ingot. Uh, now at some point we'll probably want to automate this if we ever start running low on eulorium fuel, but for now this should be fine. Yep, two for one. So now I can craft my turbine controller, which we'll definitely need. Uh, turbine power port, we'll want one of those. That's going to let us power. Turbine fluid port, we're only going to need one of these. Uh, that should be fine. And rotor bearing, we need one of these for sure. Uh, and for that, we're going to need turbine rotor shafts times... Well, we're going to need a few of these, but for now we'll just get the two that we need. Um, so turbine rotor bearing. That looks cool. And a turbine computer port will also be needed. So I guess while we're at it, we'll get like 20 of these. That should be fine. Yep, computer port. That should be good. And I think that's everything I need. So that's cool. Let's go set this stuff up. So um, in the center of this area, on the opposite side of here, is where I'm going to install my turbine rotor bearing. And then we're going to need to run turbine blades throughout this thing. So let's get a turbine rotor shaft. Like so. Cool, that should be good. And then we're going to want our turbine controller. That can go right on the front in the middle. Uh, we'll also want our... Yeah, heat port can go right here. So, well, maybe we'll put the, the, the hot liquid in there. That should be cool. Yeah, I like that idea. Now, if I tr will this thing form? Is this formed already? It might be good. Yeah, look at that. Cool. So we've got rotors ready to go. Um, so there's a whole bunch of complicated stuff in here, but it's not that complicated. It's easier than it looks. Trust me. Um, so we've got that up and running. Let's get ourselves a few more things we're going to need. How am I for ender pearls at this point? I've been kind of letting this thing run for a bit because I've known that I'm going to need a lot of enderium. My enderium that I requested should be pretty much done. I did ask for 200. What are we waiting on here? Crafting seven coal dust. Why are you, like, not crafting? Oh, you know what? Maybe somebody else snagged it when they shouldn't have. That's okay. We'll just cancel it and get a new set going. So, enderium, we've got 182. I'm going to need, like, more. So let's request... 120 more. That just bring me up to like 300-ish. So start that. We'll come back in a minute once my Enderium is done crafting. We're going to need some more Ender Pearls still. We're not quite there yet, but we're close to the amount of Enderium I'm going to need. Alright guys, so here's how this thing gets set up. I'm still waiting on the Enderium to cook because believe it or not, creating 37 blocks worth of Enderium takes a little while. Uh, but we're getting there. So this is considered a coil. We're going to have a few of these. So let's set up now, obviously, we're not going to be doing this out of stone. We're going to be doing it with enderium. Different types of metal can be used, and based on the type of metal that you're using, uh, determines pretty much like uh, the, the RF per tick that you'll get. So we want to do like a nice job of this, right? So we're going to um, make some cool things here. We're going to use enderium. It's pretty much the best one to use. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five times 8 is 40. So we really wanted 1, 2, I think this is around where we want to be. I think it's 37 ishes. Uh, the number that I've used in the past. And that tends to be pretty good. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 times 8 uh, is 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. So that should all be enderium. And then coming off the enderium, you're going to need turbine rotors. So what happens is steam is going to be pumped into here. The steam is going to spin the turbine rotors, and the more turbine rotors you have, the faster uh, the steam can run. Okay. Now, um, what's going to then happen is that the enderium blocks are going to lock onto the rotor's rotation and generate electricity based on that rotational speed and momentum of the turbine. So, 
um, the turbine rotors and blades that we have here determine how fast the turbine can spin, and then the type of block determines how efficient it is at converting that uh, rotational energy into electricity, or RF. So that's the gist of what we're working on here. So that should be pretty cool. Awesome. And then uh, we're going to bump this out another layer. And then another layer, I believe, after that. So we're going to want three layers of rotor. So remember, like I said, the more of these you have, uh, the better. And you are just a weird visual glitch. I don't know what that's all about but it'll probably be okay in a minute. There we go, cool. That doesn't look terrible, I like that. It's a little bit hard to keep an eye on what you're doing in here, trust me, but you'll get the hang of it, it's okay. Uh, more turbine blades. I crafted as many as I thought I needed, so. We'll see if I was right. So far, so good. Cool. And uh, by the way, you don't need quite as many turbine blades as I'm putting in here, but I made a few more than I needed just so that it looks cool. I think in total for what I'm doing, you really need, uh, let's see, I think it's like around 80 or 88, uh, but I wanted to go with a few more just so that it's like a full thing going on here. So that looks good. Yeah, I think that should be fine for now. So we'll test this in a minute once our Enderium's done cooking. How is our Enderium doing? 264 so far. Uh, let's go ahead and place in some other things. So we're going to need a reactor computer port. We're going to need our turbine computer port and our turbine power port. So the power port's where energy is going to be let out at. So let's place that maybe right here. So that's where the electricity will come out of. And the computer port, I haven't decided exactly how I want the computer stuff to be handled, like the wiring and everything for it. So we'll have to figure that out. I'm thinking maybe we'll recess into the wall here. This might be a good spot for a computer. So maybe the actual computer itself will be here and we can run the wires over here. So maybe a good spot for the computer port would be here. And the reactor can have a computer port. I don't know if it's allowed to be in the bottom, but let's find out. If it's allowed to be in the bottom, great. Well, it formed, so I'm gonna say that's allowed. Now, let's see if I got some capacitors crafted because I requested them, good. Uh, Enderium, let's go with 60 more. Thank you. So all the other crafting should be done except the Enderium. Let's make a capacitor real quick. I wanna make the top tier capacitor from Ender.io, the vibrant capacitor. So it's going to need one of these. And, oh right, I'm probably going to need some electrical steel. Electrical steel needs to be made in a alloy furnace. So let's do this. Uh, I believe it's silicon. Pulverized coal, good, I happen to have four. And iron. I think that's electrical steel. We'll find out if I'm right in a moment. Hooray! And now we have four. So, let me put this back because I was rearranging some recipes and such. Now I should be able to craft a vibrant capacitor bank. Awesome. We're going to need a couple of modems. Good, I already have a few. And some cables from Computer Craft, Network Computer and Cables. I'm actually going to need one more modem, I think. And I've got the computer and I've got the advanced monitors, so let's check all that out downstairs. 
My Vibrant Capacitor Bank is already getting filled up from my wireless transmitter. That's hilarious. Let's place the Vibrant Capacitor Bank like right here. Well, if I'm gonna have the power output over here somewhere, maybe, where do I want this to go? That's a tough question. Maybe my capacitor banks could be on this wall. That would be a nice place for them. So if that's the case, then maybe I want my turbine's power port to be over here, because we basically want it to be as close as humanly possible to that capacitor bank. So this thing, except for the fact that there's no, uh, you're probably complaining that there's stone in there, right? Yeah, invalid interior. So let's get rid of this stone. This was only to placehold where to start putting the rotors, but now that I've got that good, we should be cool. And then we're gonna hook up our computer while the rest of our Enderium is running. And once that's done, we should be ready to kick this thing on. Uh, the other thing we're gonna have to figure out is how to get steam over here. And that's gonna be a special challenge that I'll explain in just a moment. So yeah, maybe before we do the computer, we'll handle the steam part. So let's see, first things first, are you cool? You are cool, you're ready to go, nice. Uh, you'll notice turbine controls, right? You can control how much steam is allowed to be pumped into a turbine. The maximum is 2,000 millibuckets per tick. So we're going to basically want to have 2,000 millibuckets per tick of steam coming into here at any given time. Um, now we've got the fluid import right there, right? So we're gonna have to figure out how to get hot fluids at a rate of 2,000 millibuckets per tick right into there. And that's coming out of there. Um, so transfer nodes might work, but we're gonna need like a pretty serious amount of transferring to be able to do that. 2,000 millibuckets per tick is actually a lot. So we'll see. We'll try transfer nodes, but I don't know if we're really gonna be able to get to that point. We might need to do something a little bit better. Um, but I guess let's try transfer nodes for now. And I'm gonna request some speed upgrades. Let's say 30 for now. I should have plenty of redstone, right? Yeah, I'm pretty good on redstone. And I guess while I'm at it, I should have requested pipes too. Oh, I don't think I know how to make pipes. Let's do that real quick. There we go, much better. So we'll get our transfer node here. We're gonna to wanna to run him under the ground. Now the problem with extra utilities is they can transfer at a pretty good rate, but it's more so about how far away it needs to be. So this might actually be a pretty good distance away. See how slow it is transferring, but when I put speed upgrades in there, it should be a lot quicker to transfer the steam. We're just gonna have to hope that that 2,000 millibuckets per tick is enough. So that should be fine. So if we look in here, we should see that we've drained some steam out of the internal capacitor and we've pumped some steam into here. So as a quick temporary test, let's turn on both these reactors. So we're gonna kick this guy online. He'll start producing more steam. Then we're gonna come over here and kick this guy online and we will say activate turbine and that's going to start filling up with water because it's gonna cool the, the steam into water. Uh, we're gonna tell it to vent all exhaust, dump all exhaust fluid. I'm pretty sure that means it kills all the liquid. At least that's what I thought it would do. So yeah, you can see we're not keeping up with the steam. We're, we're incapable of transferring the steam fast enough for this thing. So he's producing a lot, I would think. You should be producing a lot of steam. Oh, water, we're, our, our limiter is water here. All right, so we're not able to produce enough water. That's a problem. So let's deactivate this guy, deactivate you, and we'll come back in a minute to figure out what we're gonna do about this. 
All right, guys, I'm currently crafting up a couple of Tesseracts, and there's a really good reason for that, and I'll show you what that is in just a moment. Um, so let's bring these guys downstairs. So I threw more world interaction upgrades into this thing. You can see we've now got 45 of them. So that's plenty of water production for this thing. So we should have plenty of water. No worries about that. Um, what we do have worries about is getting the steam over there. Because as soon as I gave it more water, this thing, regardless of how many speed upgrades I put in it, just couldn't keep up. I think I would need many, many more speed upgrades, which would start costing a lot of redstone. And while I'm not, like, you know, hurting for resources at this point, it would probably not be a good idea to waste them either. So I'm going to, instead of doing this, do this. So Tesseracts have a neat ability, and that ability is the ability to transfer an infinite amount of liquids and energy at any given time. So we're just going to tell it to ignore a redstone signal. We will call this frequency 5, and we're going to call this steam. Cool? And your configuration will be to receive fluid. Okay? And then over here, I wonder if I can have the steam output on the bottom then. That would be nice if I could. And then the reactor glass, that's turbine glass. Well, you know what, I probably didn't, so let's get it from out of here. Will this form? Nice. That should work then. All right, so let's do this. And a wrench. So then what we can do is put our transfer pipes into there for water going in, and then the steam tesseract out will be there, and this will be the steam, but you're going to be sending fluid. So check, ignore, and that just looks a little bit nicer, right? Um, we could even probably super hide this a little better. So that's completely under the flooring. Nice, right? So you should have no problem getting steam now, and you should have no problem generating steam and keeping up with it. So let's activate this turbine again. So see how steam is now at a steady 2,000 millibuckets. Um, oh, okay. It's dropping because this thing's probably offline, and it's not getting enough water. So yeah, we're still... Told you we needed a lot of water here. Uh, let's throw more speed upgrades in here. That should help. There we go. Yeah, now we're talking. Look at that. So we're keeping steady on water, we're keeping steady on steam, and this guy is keeping steady on steam, and his water is just being vented and wasted. So we've got power updates. Nice. Everything is good now. Plenty of water, plenty of steam. We're definitely wasting fuel. We're generating way more power than we need to. So we're going to deactivate this guy because we're wasting energy at this point. We're going to deactivate the turbine. Currently inactive. You can see it stops the fan blades from spinning when we deactivate it. Still not sure what's up with that weird lighting glitch, but eh, let's go see how our Enderium is doing. All right, let's get some Enderium blocks. Dun dun dun, 36. Nice. Um, are we still crafting a few pieces of Enderium? See, I think I need 36 or 37. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna request nine more Enderium. Well, might as well request 10. That should be cool. Then we'll just have that extra piece if we actually need it. So now it's finally time to place our Enderium blocks around this guy. How's that Enderium coming along? Uh, we've got four so far. Might want to wait for that one last piece. I'm going to put 37 in there. I might as well. Couldn't hurt. Okay, then. One more Enderium block, and we're good to go. 
So let's get our reactor glass ready. So we've got 37 Endurium blocks. We've got a fan blades all over the place. We should be pretty cool. So let's see if we can engage this thing. Uh, let's close this off. That is reactor glass, not turbine glass. Oh, what don't you like? Rotor bays must be closer to the bearing than all their parts. Oh, did I do this backwards? All right, so derp on my part. I think I reversed this and okay. You know what I'm gonna do to fix this? No big deal. We'll put this here. If I feel like swapping this later, I can, but this should be okay. See, look, now it's happy. Nice. All right, so you ready to generate energy? So the first thing we need to do is get this thing up to speed. So we're going to activate the turbine. So he should start spinning. You can see he's, uh, you know, generating RF as he's spinning because the coils are engaged. Okay. Uh, you are offline still, but you're still producing a little bit of steam just because you had some residual energy. I'm going to activate the reactor for a moment here. You should be fine doing that. And if we disengage the coils, this is going to take those coils that are currently on there, disengage them from the turbine, which means it will stop generating RF, but it'll allow the turbine to speed up a little bit faster. Now we want to get to a certain speed. You'll note here that it tells you on the tooltip, rotors perform best at 900 or 1800 RPM. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. If we want to get it to around the 900 or 1800 RPM mark, that's probably, you know, ideal for us. So we're going to activate this once we get our turbine rotor up to speed. Um, but let's, hmm. yeah, I guess I'll leave this be for a minute. This thing can run. I mean, we're using a little bit of, uh, I mean, we're wasting a little bit of fuel, but we have a pretty good amount of eulorium at the moment, so I'm not going to worry about wasting the fuel just yet. We're going to do this in a much more efficient manner very soon, but I just want to show you guys the basics of this, um, and then we'll see where we're at. So if we engaged coils now, we'll see we're almost producing 2,000 RF per tick, but we're still gaining speed, which is a good thing. Let's turn this off um, and let it speed up even faster. All right, so clearly it's going to take a while to get this thing up to speed, and we've reached the end of the episode, unfortunately. So uh, if we engaged coils here, you'll see we're up to 3,700-ish RF per tick already. This thing in the end is going to be able to produce a really large amount of RF, and we're actually going to be able to produce a lot more steam with this reactor. So we could probably power multiple turbines. For now, though, what I'm going to do is um, deactivate the turbine. It should be able to maintain its RPMs, um, you know, even while it's deactivated, which is fine. And we'll come back next episode. We're going to configure the computer craft component that will automatically maintain the speed and the power generation of all things and maintain uh, this reactor to run at optimal efficiency. And I'll show you how that works next episode. Uh, so we'll have the computer craft program. It's one that I've used before in Forgecraft, but it's a really nice program. I'll give you the pace spin of it uh, you know, next episode, or you can go track it down in one of my previous videos or whatever. And uh, we'll get the capacitor bank down here up and running. Awesome. So you can see max input 25,000 RF per tick uh, with just the one capacitor bank. As we expand this, he'll be able to store, it's a multi-block, so we can store a lot more power and he'll be able to accept a lot more power. Cool. So for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the big reactors episode. Next episode, we'll probably finish it up. And there's a couple other projects I want to get started on as soon as this thing's up and running. All right, guys, take it easy.